Visual Studio Code for IBM I programmers. Why are you still banging on about that, Nick? I can hear you thinking. Also, what on earth is going on with your beard and hair, Nick? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit unruly and crazy because I'm growing it. I'm going to a very fancy barber's with a full like strop shave and everything at the weekend. So I'm just letting it go mental until I get there. But I digress. So uh, Visual Studio Code for IBM I is a wonderful tool. If you are a newbie in the IBM I world, or if you're an old school AS400 and iSeries programmer thinking about moving from the green screen, SEU and PDM based program development into VS Code and you wanna figure out what to do and how to do it and what you need to install, then this is the course for you. I'm trying to put this together for two reasons. One, to help freshers or people that want to learn about it. And two, for a memory jogger for me, because it seems to be evolving at such a fast rate re recently. Um, I'm finding new features all the time. And this last few weeks, I found this excellent feature. These are the main components. Let me just go through them really quickly. Code for IBM I, which if you've watched anything that I've been blathering on with Visual Studio Code, that is the extension for VS Code that lets it work with your IBM I system. IBM A Source Orbit is another extension, and it uh, keeps track of all the source code. As you suck it into um, Visual Studio Code and play with it, it builds a relationship database. So it knows this file is used by this program, uh, and this program calls this program, et cetera, et cetera. Git is a version control system, which you work, it lets you just track versions and share your development environment with other programmers. So if you're not familiar with Git, I can't think of an, a direct equivalent in the, the green screen world. It's like it does half of what the change management systems turn over Aldon do, do, does. It basically says you check the source code out, make changes, then you push it back. You and your whole team can be working on something and it figures out the code changes and puts them back in. You can apply changes, roll back changes, do all that stuff within the code. Bob is this very cool new and growing extension, which basically lets me compile source from my desktop PC or my laptop or my iPad or my whatever on the IBM I system. And Project Explorer, as I'm discovering over this week, is the glue that hands all of these things together. I'd previously written a couple of blogs about Source Orbit and Bob and Git, and uh, they're all kind of in the same sphere, but now they're all part of this one, see, I've written a, a class here called what is code for IBM I, the IBM I development pack includes all of these things. So I'm basically putting this course together saying, this is what you need to do. This is how you install source orbit. This is how you get Git versioning. This is what Bob is and how it works. And here's the project explorer. If I go into VS code just quickly, I don't want to go into too much detail because it will bore you. This is going to be just a high level overview. And then we'll do separate videos going through each step in more detail. Um, let me maximize this. So here I am, this is Visual Studio Code. This section up here is my local PC. This section over here happens to be my IFS directories on my machine. And here's my Project Explorer, which is the glue that keeps my PC talking to my IFS. So I can suck code down. Source Orbit takes that code, will suck it out of uh, source files and source libraries, convert it into IFS format, and straight down to my PC. And when it's on my PC, here I am looking at programs that have been imported by Source Orbit. This is a, an RPG program that you might recognize, but look in a wonderful big lump of code. This was column based. Visual Studio Code with a right click and a click has converted all of this to free format for me. So I'm now currently going through and just trying to make it a bit tidy to make sure that everything converted okay. I can compile from here, right click, run compile. And what Project Explorer will do is take my source off my PC automatically copy it up to the IFS location that I told it to use and compile it into a library that I told it to compile it. So with this bunch of plugins and modules, we now have full free range source code development for all IBM I types native on our PC. It's pretty excellent. And uh, I've got it all up and running. I've been playing with it this week and I'm now gonna start expanding it to move all of my source code for any applications that I've written into this and then store it on GitHub. Very excited about it. And I'm gonna be expanding this course as I learn each new thing or I have something interesting to share that I think maybe someone will find interesting in the tips and tricks. I'll just be adding new lessons. So uh, 
leave a comment if I say something wrong or something's been deprecated or updated recently or leave a, or drop me an email or a ticket on the website if you want me to cover something or you have any questions. I love poking around in this stuff and happy to help. So I will see you out there in the programming world. Well, I probably won't, but you know what I mean. See you later.